Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. We are going to get started in about 30 seconds here. So we'll just allow uh, the rest of the attendees to filter in, make sure the GoToWebinar platform is working properly, and then we will get started. So just hang tight. We I have a blizzard starting just outside my window here. So I feel like everyone can hear the sounds, but I'm sure you cannot. So if I keep glancing over there, that's why. Um, all right, so it, uh, it's officially start time, 2 p.m. EST and 11 a.m. PDT. So we are going to get started with our webinar. So happy Tuesday, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. My name's Jenna and I work for Emerging Destinations. And today I'm being joined by Judy and she's with Enchanted Expedition. So uh, before I introduce our topic to you and hand things over to her, I'm going to take a quick minute to introduce our portfolio. So we have um, quite the extensive portfolio. Um, since we are talking about um, Enchanted Expeditions who are located in Ecuador, I'm going to introduce our Americas portfolio to you today. Although if you do have any questions about any of the other companies that you see on the screen there, please feel free to reach out to me. My email address is at the bottom. Um, so starting with um, Canyon Manus Ranch. So they are a ranch located in New Mexico. Um, offering a rare rare breed of madness, we like to say, so lots of horseback riding, adventures, etc. cetera there. Um, Grand Hotels Lux, who have properties in Uruguay and Argentina. Las Torres Reserve in Patagonia. They are operating trekking circuits as well as a hotel in the Cerro del Paine National Park. Um, Enchanted Expeditions, who we are speaking with today. So they offer DMC services on mainland Ecuador, in addition to having two ships and a lodge in the Gal Galapagos Islands. But uh, today we will be focusing specifically on the DMC portion in on Ecuador mainland. Um, moving on from there, we also have Travel Pioneers. So they are a boutique DMC in Central America. Uh, they are located in Costa Rica. Uh, Colombian Journeys and Chile Concepts. So those are both DMCs in their respective countries. So that is a quick uh, introduction to our Emerging Destinations portfolio to you. Um, again, as I mentioned, if you would like to set up a private training or want to receive any digital information on any of the companies that you see up there on your screen, please feel free to reach out to me. And a couple of housekeeping items to go over before we get started. So this webinar will be recorded. Um, I will be sending a webinar follow-up out to everybody later this week, which will include the uh, recording in it as well. In addition, though, we always post all of our previous recorded webinars on our Emerging Destinations YouTube channel and our Emerging Destinations website. So if there is one that you've missed, you can always go back and take a peek there. Um, but this one will be recorded, so if there is any reason that you have to step out early or you come in late, uh, just know that we will have that for available for you. And lastly, I would love to encourage everybody to participate. So throughout Judy's presentation today, if you have a question or a comment, please feel free to type that through on the GoToWebinar control panel uh, located on the right-hand side. Uh, at the end of the presentation, we will get Judy to answer as many of those questions as we can, of course, time permitting. Uh, we don't want to uh, take up too much of your day because we appreciate you being here with us. So if there are some questions that we don't get to, we will make sure that uh, those are answered and then sent out to you as well in the webinar follow-up. So on that note, I will hand things over to Judy Carvalho of Enchanted Expeditions, who will take you through today's presentation on mainland Ecuador. Hello, everyone. As Jenna said, I'm Judy Carvajal. I'm the owner and the um, founder of Enchanted Expeditions. Good morning, good afternoon, uh, wherever you are. Sorry, there was a little technical issue here. And thank you, Jenna, and thank you, Emerging Destinations, for giving me this opportunity to present. So the, I'm going to be talking about mainland Ecuador. Mainland Ecuador is this very small country that we often overlook. Everybody knows about Galapagos, but have no idea about really the richness, the small, the diverse, the how diverse that this country is. But who are we? We are, as Dan, uh, Jenna said, we're a DMC for Ecuador and Galapagos. We do own two yachts and a lodge. We are a family business. We have over 30 years operating on mainland Ecuador and over 40 years in Galapagos. And many of us started out as guides and we're all nature enthusiasts. Ecuador, for those who don't know, it lies right on the equator. 
it's a very small country. It's about the size of the state of Colorado. And as you can see, there it is, and due west are the Galapagos Islands. And this very tiny country has four very distinct regions. The Galapagos, the Pacific Coast, the Andean Highlands, and the Amazon. That's what makes it so diverse. Today we'll be talking about the three regions on mainland Ecuador. We have on the Amazon in the east, which is flanked by Colombia in the north and Brazil in the west. And we have the highlands, what we call La Sierra, which runs from Colombia in the north and Peru in the south. And then we have the coast, which obviously is on the Pacific. And just in general information, just to give you an idea of the size of the country, it's a 109,000 square miles. As I said, well, that's just the number, but it's about the size of Colorado. Our language are Spanish and Quechua. The currency is the US dollar, population 17 million, ethnic groups, mestizo, indigenous, Afro-Ecuadorian and European. And we do have four UNESCO heritage sites, two cultural and two natural ones. So, why is it called the most compact, mega diverse country in the world? It's because of the diversity in such a small area. As you can see just by these numbers here, the number of species of birds, 18% in the world. 19% of our area is protected. We have thousands of species of orchids and birds, of course, as I just said, 17 indigenous nationalities four World Heritage Sites, 150 festivals, 32 volcanoes, Chimborazo being the closest point to the sun based on the fact that we're on the equator. So this is what makes the country very diverse. So today I will be covering the various areas and at the end of this presentation give you some ideas of itineraries for your clients. So we'll start with the Andean Highlands, which is the most diverse culturally and in traditions for Ecuador. The highlights here would be the two world heritage cities, which are Quito and Cuenca, the avenue of the volcanoes, the colorful markets, hot springs, national parks and reserves, historic haciendas turned into boutique hotels, which is very unique to Ecuador, community tourism options, Otavalo, Quilotoa in Cuenca. This is a whole new avenue right now happening and very much encouraged overnights at communities. The adventure, whether it be walking, biking, rafting, trekking, horseback riding, mountain climbing. And most trips start in Quito. Quito was established 486 years ago. It's the highest constitutional capital. We're sitting at over 9,000 feet. It's the first city in the world to be declared of a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And the second largest city in Ecuador with a population of just over 2 million. Now, what is the attraction here other than the point of arrival is the architecture, the World Heritage City, the old city with the rich colonial architecture of buildings from the 16th and century century, many of them religious. And here, of course, um, the restaurants, the, the hotels in the old center, the colonial hotels. And this is just an example of what you will see in the, in the churches. Okay, now the Avenue of the Volcanoes. Deem the Avenue of the Volcanoes for a reason. The Andean Highlands of Ecuador have 32 volcanoes, obviously active and mostly dormant. And it is really a thrill to the mountain climber, the trekker, the beauty of this. This is just to give you an idea of, we have a road, the Pan American Highway, in fact, which goes from north to south through the country. And you will travel through as one of the attractions, what we call the Avenue of the Volcanoes. So this sort of gives you an idea here of the various volcanoes you'll see, snow-capped volcanoes as you travel through the country. And what can you do in these areas? Well, train rides, mountaineering, trekking, hiking, nature, horseback riding also. And the haciendas, as I mentioned, many of these are over 400 years old. There were farms with these beautiful houses now turned into boutique hotels. And these are where we'd normally have guests staying. They're dotted throughout the highlands and from the north to the south. 
this would be our overnight uh, stays would be in these old haciendas, many of them still working farms. So you have to, whether they, they have cattle or they have a reserve or they are, um, have small cheese factories on them. So this is a point of interest. Here are some images of some of the old ones. The other thing are the hot springs. I'm featuring here the Papayacta hot springs, which is situated in the cloud forest. And I mean, as you can see, I mean, look at the beauty of this place with um, the Antisana in the distance there. There's a spa here, there are trails. So this is a spot uh, that our guests would stay before after Galapagos are on their way to the jungle because it's on between Quito and on a road that leads towards the Amazon. And here, this is actually what the text somehow didn't come out here. Um, what I'm trying to point out here are the markets. The markets, whether it be uh, markets with um, tapestries or artifacts, the, the, the markets are extremely colorful in terms of the food. We always have our guests visit markets just to, to, to see the, the people, the ladies trading, um, the, the produce. And this could be either in Otavalo, Sakisili, Zimbabwe. There's always a market some day of the week. So there's always a chance during a regular itinerary or any itinerary to stop over at a market. And the roses, rose farms, Ecuadorian roses are considered the best in the world. And it, the reason for that is the, uh, the location of the country on the equator, the 12 hours of sunlight all year. So whenever possible, we do visit a rose farm. These are significant for the country, the number of women employed, and it's, it's an important part of the economy and a beautiful project to visit. Now, Cuenca is the other World Heritage City, and Cuenca is situated at little less altitude than Quito at 2,500 meters, also a World Heritage City. And what do we have here? We have the architecture, the winding cobblestone streets, the artisans. What's very nice in and around Cuenca, the number of artisans, whether it be jewelry makers or uh, woodworkers or tapestry. So there's a lot to see around Cuenca, including Inga Pirca, which is actually the only, uh, well, the most important pre-Columbian structure in Ecuador. It's, it was a ceremonial site. The Incas were only in Ecuador for approximately 50 years, but around here was also the Canaries, which were before the Incas. And of course, the iconic Panama hat, which is actually from Ecuador. And here around Cuenca, we can actually, as we travel around, we see women weaving the hats and then they go to the factory where they're sorted and sold. But what we as a company try to do is we, we take our guests directly to the artisans that are making the hats and we visit the specialty shops also. And here we meet the artisans and learn about their craft. So it could be the weaving, the ecat weaving you see here, or the jewelry, or we go to a little town called Tigua where they make these um, uh, naive paintings. Um, Anyway, the next region. So I've basically covered what the highlights of the, uh, the Andean region, the north to south. But now we're going to go on to the Amazon. And here, well, of course, the wildlife and nature, indigenous communities of the Amazon, we have the opportunity to visit, obviously, the geography, the seeing, the scenery. And the lodges have um, viewing platforms, which gives a different perspective on the, on, the, on the scenery, of course. And here, of course, it's the experience. It's all about the nature, the people who for centuries have lived here. So this gives you a bit of a feeling. And now the lodges we work with have excellent guides. We have native guides and other guides too. So we get both perspectives. And here a bit of the wildlife you would see on a trip to the jungle. To the Amazon and here we okay in general what am I trying to say here the sharing and learning from local communities we work with several communities so whether it be in the jungle like the image on the left or uh, the gentleman on the right the lower right he's telling us about his um, their cosmovision or you share learning about their cooking 
or if you're daring you could try uh, whatever the gentleman is eating up there <laughs> in the jungle so the whole point is overnights in the local communities which also brings the tourist dollar directly to the local communities and they're very much part of tourism in ecuador and learning about the country and the culture and then the coast we have the coast on the pacific coast and the attractions here well people come to surf obviously the beaches and whale watching the humpback whales are in that region between june and september so that's an attraction there and the highlights around there, as I said, the whale watching, chocolate farms, I didn't mention, but that's also on the coast, the bird watching, the beaches, quiet keel, the cuisine. Now, due to its varied topography and rich cultural her heritage, the gastronomy of Ecuador is very rich and diverse and very much overlooked. People often don't think about that, but um, the, the food, can vary tremendously from one area to the other. The coast, for example, is heavily food based, seafood based with coconut and rice. The Amazon unique in itself and the, and the highlands would be meats, corn, potato soup, all flavors and so on. So that's something we, we highlight and most of our guests will have this opportunity. Also being the, the country it is, we have coconuts, mangoes, and all the tropical fruit, the bananas and so on growing. And at the same time, we have temperate fruit, all berries and apples and pears. So the country is very, um, has a bit of everything. All right, now the national parks and reserves. Mainland has, mainland Ecuador has 10 national parks and 25 reserves that range from the high volcanic all the way down to the coast with over you know 1600 bird species and mammals orchids and you know what the country is so small that it's easy. the longest flight within ecuador is 45 minutes or should be from quito all the way south to loja to fly to the jungle is 40 minutes so the traveling time between any place of interest is very short so in a short space of time, anyone can see as much as possible or, or within a week, get a really good cross section of all the, the diverse aspects of Ecuador. And the people, Ecuador is home to many indigenous groups, as I mentioned, that still maintain a lot of their traditions. You may see them in Western clothes when they're working, but they go home and they use their own clothing, their own food, their own festivals, and it's easy to, to make contact with these people and they're happy to talk to you. So it's, it's actually a, quite a nice aspect. It's not only just for the festivals. I haven't mentioned the festivals, but there are over 150 festivals throughout the year and you could be traveling through the country and suddenly there is a festival somewhere. We will stop and have a look and participate or just look at it. So endless activities with such a variety in terrains and climate ecuador really is perfect for just about anything whether it's hiking whether it's the culture whether it's horseback riding cycling rafting open spaces lots of reserves so it's cultural but it's also very much nature oriented and what i have here are some itineraries I'm going to end here with basically giving you um, an idea of what can be done. Here is the is what we call the Northern Loop. It's an Andean Andean highlands and cloud forest. There, there's a great mixture of cultures, soft adventure. We would start out with, say, a Quito city tour and head north. North meaning here I'm pointing out, we're going this way towards Otavala. You'd get the famous Otavala market. You can go up to Cotacachi, hike around that lake. And actually that town is famous for the leather, everything in the, you can buy anything leather made there. And then we, we would continue on around Nibara. Around Nibara, there's the wood carving town. And on this trip, you'll overnight at one of the old haciendas. And we can continue along. There is also, I didn't talk about the middle of the world monument. There's a middle of the world monument around Cayambe. There's another one outside of Quito, which is a huge attraction to, to 
stand in the northern and, hem and southern hemisphere and and there's there are museums there and so on and then we could continue all the way on to the Papayakta hot springs there are spectacle bears to be seen there there are hikes there uh, so in this you will have hot springs community stay historical hacienda horseback riding all of these and this could be done within two to five days and give a good um, good cross-section within the highlands. The other one is what we call our travel from the high Andes to the coast. Now this gets you all the way up from 2009, well, let's talk in feet, 9,000 feet all the way down to Guayaquil. And we're traveling through the avenue of the volcanoes. So what is the highlight here? The volcanoes, the national parks, the market, the haciendas, a rose plantation, the train ride. Here we can also see the Inca Pirca ruins, the Inca ruins here. And then we get here and the attraction is not only Cuenca, it's the artisans in and around Cuenca, whether it be the jewelry makers, the cut weavers. And then from here we could go hiking in the Cajas National Park, which is around here. And then we continue on and we stop at a cocoa farm. We get to visit a little farm, see how they make chocolate, uh, and understand a bit about uh, tropical farming, and then to Guayaquil. Most people from here will fly on to Galapagos, which is an hour and a half flight away. Sometimes, for those who really would like to see the whale watching, they will continue along this coast, and from here, do a trip, a boat trip, to see the whales. So this is an example I've put here three to five days because it all depends on what we include on this trip. Another example is, I call this the bird watching trip, but it doesn't have to be bird watching. Now, it's either you fly from Quito on this 40 minute flight to Coca where you would then get into your canoe and travel along the river to get to your lodge where you'll spend a few days at a jungle lodge in the Amazon there. And then you can either fly back or you can come back by road or go down by road. Now, the advantage of doing this by road, there again, we could start in Quito and we could come along, stop at the hot springs, stay at a different um, lodge further down in the jungle. Our bird watchers or people that are interested in birds or just wildlife will do that trip before ending here in the jungle. Another area north of Quito is our western cloud forest around Mindo, which is another area for wildlife for birds. And of course, around Quito would be the Quito city tour, the uh, monument, and so on. So anyways, this is Ecuador in a nutshell, all the variety that the country has to offer. I hope I covered it all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judy. That was fantastic. I am um... I have quite an affinity for Ecuador as well my, myself. I lived there for about six months in 2016, and I had the, the privilege of going back to visit um, this year with Judy, actually. We did um, Galapagos, and we combined it, of course, with mainland Ecuador. So we did about five days on mainland Ecuador, and I still saw things that I had never seen, even after living there and being active doing excursions for six months. So it's really deceiving. I mean, it's such a small country, but there's so much to offer. And I think it's, I mean, to me, it's worth exploring. Um, I know to you as well, Judy. So uh, thank you so much for that, that presentation. Um, now, I know there's a few people that have joined since the beginning, so I will just remind everyone that this webinar is being recorded. So if you do have to step away, um, don't worry about that. I'll make sure that you get a copy of the Q&A session, as well as now would be a fantastic time to type through any questions that you might have for Judy. So please take advantage of her knowledge and type through any questions that you would like answered. Again, if we don't get to all of them, then I will make sure that we are um, answering those and sending them to you in our webinar follow-up. So um, we'll get started here. I have I have a question for you, Judy. Um, okay. I know that you raised your family in Ecuador. So why is it so important for you that people include mainland Ecuador when visiting the Galapagos? 
well, I think we'd be missing out on something so unique. Um, <laughs> God. It that, puts you on the spot. Yeah, you did put me on the spot. The thing <laughs> is important because there is so much to see that is so different. Uh, when you come, I mean, if you've never been to anywhere else in South America, I don't like to compare countries because everywhere is very different. Uh, but Ecuador, the, the, the indigenous culture, the, the people you have, the people of Ecuador, the sceneries, I mean, the, like, look at what you're seeing in front of you there with the volcanoes. Uh, so just taking the, the outdoor part, which I have, uh, you know, on the weekends, my kids and I, we would travel to every corner that we possibly could. I mean, they joke, they say, yeah, well, here we go with mom again, uh, visit Ecuador, the whole of Ecuador in two days. But it was, I just couldn't stay away from leaving the city and, and just finding any corner, whether it be the hot springs, whether it be going to the Cotopaxi and hiking around, or whether it be going and visiting uh, friends in indigenous communities and sharing a meal with them. Or just even though we, we've seen it so many times, I love going into markets, I love talking to the artisans, I love to see what they're making. Um, mm -hmm. And there were some arts like the ikat weaving it was dying a few years ago. And it's so nice to see that it's being revived because a lot of the young men were, were leaving to the United States. So thanks to tourism, it's coming back. And, um, and, and yeah, so I think it's a shame if you come all this, this way and you skip over Ecuador and just do a city tour, you're missing a lot more. Wonderful. That was such a fantastic answer. Thank you, Judy. Um, we have a couple of questions coming through here. So in here's the first one. Um, if a client only has three days for mainland Ecuador, is there enough time to include a visit to the Amazon? No. No. How much how much time would you say is a minimum amount of extra days if you're including an Amazon visit? Because of the access, you know, you have to fly in and then you have to take a canoe and get to, to the, I would say you need three nights in the Amazon. I mean, okay. you could do it in two, but it's, it seems like a lot of traveling for, for ideally, most of them, they just run for three nights. So you're flying in by the time you get to the, to the lodge, you know, between the time on the river and you get to the lodge, that's the first night. And then you have the second and you, yeah, you need three nights. Right. To get the full days. Okay. Um, I have another question here. So there's an inquiry. Um, someone has a couple who want to tour Ecuador for two weeks, um, so on and so forth. They they were wondering what the next step is. So if they want to book a trip with you, what is the next step into getting a quote and building an itinerary? Oh, just writing to us. Writing to you. So um, I can, and Jay, I can provide you with the email address, um, or you can always just write to me and I can put you in touch with the sales team from the Enchanted Expeditions office. So if you do have any inquiries, you can reach out to me and I can make sure that you are connected to the person um, that you need to speak with in order to get started on that. Yeah. Can I add something to that? It's always yeah. nice to know what... What are people's general int interests you know because sometimes we have people just write oh i want to visit well it'd be nice to know what their their general interests their budget because you know in this business what makes the difference is is where you stay really because the tours are going to be the same but so if people are you know budget isn't a problem it makes it, it it makes a difference in terms of like where we start out in overnighting in old quito uh, in the historical center. I mean, we have all kinds of absolutely amazing boutique, boutique hotels in the center of the town. Mm -hmm. And then when we go out into the countryside, the haciendas also vary. But it would be nice to know what people, do they want a horseback ride? Do they want to hike? Do they want to just, um, is it just cultural? It's nice to know a little bit about the client's interests. Yes. All right. And um, now I know this is kind of an obvious question or one that we get at almost all of our webinars, but can you just briefly outline what the current COVID guidelines are for, for Ecuador? Okay, the gu guidelines are to get into the country, you have to be either vaccinated or have a negative PCR test that was taken within 72 hours. And that's in general all over the country. 
Um, however, but what, what I'm trying to say here mm -hmm. is that there are, you know, COVID protocols very strictly in place everywhere. I mean, you have to wear a mask uh, on all outdoor spaces, and there's still the the um, limited number of people in restaurants and things like that. Uh, all those protocols are in place, and currently in Ecuador, over 55% of the people are vaccinated, but the numbers are higher in the cities um, because anybody we know, for example, is has been vaccinated, but I mean, that doesn't say anything. I think probably the vaccination rate, what brings the percentage down is probably in the very, very remote areas where uh, the vaccination process is slower. And the number of cases, people wonder, there, there are not many cases. I don't know the actual numbers, but there isn't a crisis situation in Ecuador with that. Yeah. And Galapagos, yeah, as far as I know, there's not right now. I was, um, I was just going to mention that I was very impressed with all of the protocols and the sanitization process, et cetera. Everything that they had in place in Ecuador from the minute you landed to, you know, going out for dinner, et cetera. Everything was, I mean, it was better than, <laughs> than it is in Canada or, or the U.S. So, I mean, they're really, really on top of it down there. So I was, yeah, quite, quite impressed with all of the systems they had in place. Um, another question for you, um, do clients need visas to enter Ecuador? No. You're and given a visa upon arrival. Right. Visa in a sense, you're given, like, I think it's three months or something like that. Yeah, yeah, you get uh, 90 days upon entry. Yeah. Um, all right, so we'll take just a couple more questions before we uh, wrap up for today. Um, so in an ideal world, Judy, what is the perfect recommend amount of time that you would recommend to spend on the mainland Ecuador if you're also combining it with the Galapagos or if you're not? I mean, I would say a week, a, a week, week. So a little cross section you, with that, at least you could probably, if possible, do the jungle for three nights and then the others. Um, the highlights of the highlands that that's a minimum and i know people are usually just on a two-week holiday so if they would spend half the time there and about half the time in galapagos because galapagos does need about a week um but to to skim over it i mean i have people saying oh but i'm going to peru <laughs> i mean it's not the same i no. Peru is a different destination is different highlights different everything it's two different things you're just coming to ecuador um don't skim over it if you can a week on the mainland and um last last question that we will do and again if there's a question that we didn't get to i will make sure that those are answered in the webinar follow-up so um are all of your itineraries are you creating them um are they custom itineraries and are they all private or do you plan any small group set departures no, we don't do set departures. Everything is private. Um, we've tried the set departures, but it doesn't really work because even though on our website you'll see all these tours and, and their recommendations, because every group is individual is different. Mm -hmm. So Taylor made m most of our trips. Now, if we have just one person or two people that want to do a city tour, and it could be quite costly to just do that through us privately if they don't want to or they cannot afford it then we will put them with another company and pool with someone else but that's just for things like a city tour right perfect all right well i think that leaves us in a pretty good amount of time so let's um wrap it up there for today but thank you so much everybody for joining us and judy for your your passion and your expertise about ecuador it's always uh, such a pleasure and again if anyone has additional questions um, please feel free to reach out to me and i can definitely connect you um, with judy and her team so Thank you so much and keep um, your eyes peeled for um, a webinar in the coming months. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Happy Tuesday.